Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today we're going to talk about fixing mistakes and making adjustments. Hi, this is Paul Dye. One of the things about building airplanes is that no airplane is perfect. Even that big Boeing airliner that you get on has errors that had to be fixed. So when you're building your own airplane, don't obsess about perfection. If you do, you probably will never finish. The real key to building a good airplane is not just doing it right the first time. It's how to fix problems that arise along the way. I always tell people that if Boeing is building a wing for a 737, and it's a perfect job all the way through until the very last hole and the guy sneezes and makes an oblong, they don't throw that wing away. They're going to engineer a fix to make sure that they can save the part and keep on moving on. Now that's not to say that you're not going to throw away some parts. You are going to throw away some parts as you build your airplane. You're going to reorder those parts and start over. You're going to make bonehead mistakes like I have, where you drill something backwards, you make the part completely opposite the way the plan showed. These things happen. The key to learning to be a good builder is learning how to fix your mistakes. So let's talk about a few common mistakes that can happen. And I'll be honest about some of them. Some of them you just can't fix, you're going to have to start over. Some of them will suggest options that you can fix and oftentimes we're going to say, well, here's a possible course of action, but you really need to check with your kit designer or kit manufacturer to make sure that it is an adequate job. One of the big things that you can run into is edge distance violations. Now, edge distance to review is simply the distance that you put a hole from the edge of a sheet. Easy to explain. If you put a hole really close to the edge of the sheet and then you start pulling tension on that or shear, you can kind of imagine how you could literally pull the edge of that right out of the fastener and just tear through the edge. So obviously if you can do that, you can put that hole far enough back so that you cannot pull that out of the edge before the fastener itself fails. That distance is minimum edge distance. And for aluminum parts, it is considered to be two times the diameter of the hole that you're going to drill. So if you're drilling a quarter inch hole, you need to be, the center of that hole needs to be a half inch from the edge of the sheet. If you're drilling a, a, a 332nd inch hole, it needs to be at least 3 16ths from the edge of the sheet, and so on and so forth. Well, what happens if you Punch, that, punch something, let's say you're, you've got a rib underneath a, a skin, you've marked some holes, and somehow when you take it all apart, you notice that that, that that rib has moved, you've drilled a hole, and that hole is too close to the edge. There are ways to take care of that. But again, you want to check with your kit manufacturer to make sure that it's a legal engineering fix. One way is to simply ignore that hole and drill a hole on either side that has the proper edge distance two rivets instead of one. Make sure that you are appropriate edge distance from the bad hole, of course. So that's one option uh, for fixing edge distance violations. Sometimes if you've drilled a whole row of, of rivets along an, a rib, rib flange because it moved and they're all uh, uh, shorter than minimum edge distance, you're going to have to start over with a new part. So you can't fix all the mistakes, but you can fix some of them. Another problem that happens to people is, is, is that they countersink too deep. Uh, they, they, they haven't taken the time to check their countersink. You need to do that. Anytime you pull the countersink out of the drawer and you're going to countersink a part, you want to do a test on a piece of scrap to make sure that it's not going too deep and adjust it until it's just right. So what do you do if the countersink is too deep? Frankly, you can't put the smaller rivet in that hole and have it sit less than flush because it's not going to rivet properly. So, one thing you can do is to upsize the rivet. So if you've used a dash 3 rivet, 3 seconds, you can go up to a dash 4 rivet, which is going to be an eighth inch, assuming that you have appropriate edge distance, right? 
That's going to fill the hole. So you drill up the hole to the next size, you take out the bigger countersink, you test it on a piece of scrap to make sure that it's going to be the right depth because you're not going to want to go to the next size rivet, then you certainly won't have edge distance, and go ahead and do it again. If you're laying out your own rivet holes uh, and you're not doing it with pre-punched holes, you might give a little bit extra edge distance just in case you screw one up and you got to go to the next size rivet. Okay, so these are little pro tips for you. Especially if they're, if they're flush rivets, you can do just a little fill before paint and you'll never even notice that one's the wrong size. What happens if you're dimpling a sheet and you suddenly realize that you've dimpled the part in the wrong direction? It happens. In many cases, you can just flatten that dimple out. Put a pair of flat dies in your squeezer, flatten it out. You can reverse a dimple, most cases, as long as it's not brittle aluminum but um, you can only do it once. So if you, if you screw up and make one dimple where you don't want it or it's backwards, you can, you can fix it with a pair of flat dimple dies or you can push it out the other direction. Um, but, but just once, otherwise you're gonna work hard in the piece. What happens if you've drilled out the rivet, you had a bad rivet, you drilled it out, you got a little bit aggressive when you're drilling it out and now the hole is too big. You put the new rivet in, it wobbles around in there. If it's just a very, very little bit of wobble, the rivet's going to expand when you set it. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, boy, that hole's really too big. Well, you have to go up to the next size. But you want a perfect line of rivets. You've, you're doing an elevator. You've got a perfect size, a perfect line of dash three rivets. And you don't want to have one dash four rivet head in that line. Well, they make something called an oops rivet. An oops rivet is a dash four rivet, an eighth inch, with the head of a dash three. So it's a very, very tiny head on a dash four rivet. So when you've pulled it, you're going to look, it's going to look like it's a dash three, but it's actually a dash four. What you can't do with oops rivets is make a whole line of them because you're not going to have the strength. An oops rivet is to, for one spot in a line, maybe two. Talk with your kit manufacturer before you're doing that but they're a clever little thing to have. Another problem that people run into all the time is a figure eight hole. Somehow you've drilled a hole, you've drilled another hole too close to it, you've got two holes that are overlapping. There are fixes for that. And as much as I'd like to tell you what those fixes are, I'd rather direct you to your kit manufacturer. It's probably gonna involve a doubler underneath and putting two holes on either opposite side. But you need to check with the kit manufacturer. Don't just ask the folks on the internet forums. I'm one of those people on the internet forums and I don't always know the answers. And I'm not gonna make them up, but some people like to make sure that, that they get their voice out there. So check with your kit manufacturer on, on figure eight holes. Um, dents and dings, these happen all the time. You drop a, drop a bucking bar, it makes a ding puts in a dent. Um, if it's an any, you can fill that at paint time. Um, if it's going to be a, uh, uh, an unpainted airplane, eh, it's going to be a little bit more visible. If it's an Audi, they're pretty hard to fix. The problem is, once you've stretched the aluminum, you can't unstretch it. Now, you can try, but it's always going to be visible. So really the question is, can you live with it or not? And again, the best way to do this, if it's a very minor ding, you're gonna be able to live with it, or from a structural standpoint. Whether you can live with it from appearance, that's, that's up to you. But the best thing again here is to check with your kit manufacturer or a good engineer. If you happen to be an aeronautical engineer, you're gonna know how to fix this anyways. But check with your kit manufacturer, send them a photo, and say, is this acceptable? I bet you they're, in most cases they're gonna say, yeah, it's fine, as long as you can live with it. Thanks again for Aircraft Spruce sponsoring this series and thanks to you for watching.